Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to give you guys an update on how to use your new Jaxual camera lenses for Blender 4.2 with the update that lets you move anywhere. So let's dive in. If you have a nice scene, uh, pull it into Blender 4.2. Uh, the beta just released, so I have a very simple HDR that I tilted up to see the trees, and I have uh, some models from Thingiverse uh, just to display depth of field and show you some of the effects coming in. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to append the camera I'm looking for. I'm going to go into File, Append, and grab the Helium 420 58mm camera. When I go in, I want to grab the entire collection for the Jaxual camera, and you'll see it jump into our scene. Step two will be to go into the scene settings and choose the camera that you just ported in. Step three, let's jump into the camera view. If we see a black image, uh, we need to bump up our light bounces or our light paths in the render tab. So let's start incrementing up the transmission and the total until we start to see an image come through. It looks like it starts to come through at around 12 and I'm just going to give it a couple extra um, and it is a little bit dark but that's because we have a real aperture and I'm going to go down to color management just kind of adjust things until it looks like a good exposure. Now that Blender has real-time compositing, you can see some of your effects of your compositing window as you render and find a good shot. Uh, I like to just throw on zero saturation to get a black and white image. And another little trick, if I choose the transformation pivot point as the 3D cursor, I can now pivot directly around wherever I set that focus point and really dial a nice shot in. Additionally, if you'd like to change the size of the film, by default, this is full frame. Um, if you'd like to change the size of it, we're going to go into the actual camera here on the right in the tree, and then in your camera settings, the orthographic scale is directly tied um, is directly tied to the size of the film. So the maximum width here would be 36 millimeters by this example. If I want to do a micro four thirds sensor, I could punch in 17.3 and that would give us the equivalent of a micro four thirds sensor on this camera. So there we have it, it's that simple. Append the camera to the scene, adjust your light settings so you get an image, stage your camera and your focus, and select a sensor size for your camera, and press render, it's that easy. All right guys, enjoy. If you have any questions, you can find me on X at Jack Morphic or on Instagram at the same handle. Uh, let me know if you are enjoying your lenses and I would love to see your art. Please send me what you're making. Hey, really quick, I just wanted to give a big thanks to Eden Spiegel from uh, YouTube, who's got a great Blender tutorial series where he creates full cinematic scenes and explains his process along the way. Uh, he lent me this mushroom scene that we're going to look at in a second for a comparison of just lenses and their depth of field that they bring. You can find him here on his YouTube page. I'll put a link to his page down in the description below. And we're going to take a look at a little scene that he created uh, involving a mushroom. Oh, it's upside down. So look at this very mossy scene. Uh, simple, an HDRI but with a very beautifully decorated log uh, with moss and a bright red mushroom in the middle. And I'm just going to flip through a couple example shots because I took every camera I own into this scene to give you example renders to show you the, how, what, to show you the different depth of field for all these different cameras.